Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says. My name is Travis and let's talk about Doctor Who. More specifically, the Missing Doctor Who Christmas Special. Were you aware that there was a Missing Doctor Who Christmas Special? Most of you have probably never seen the Missing Doctor Who Christmas Special, and that's because it's a first Doctor story which aired back in 1965. The entire serial was titled The Daleks Master Plan and ran from November of 1965 to January of 1966. And the Daleks Master Plan is mostly missing. Only three of the original 12 episodes still remain in the BBC archives. Now, it's not entirely a Christmas special, but one of the episodes of the Daleks Master Plan landed on airing on Christmas. Episode 7, The Feast of Stephen. And even though the serial was titled The Daleks Master Plan, Episode 7, The Feast of Stephen, which was airing on Christmas, had very little to do with the overarching plot with the Daleks. You see, the studio had the foresight to see that one of the episodes of The Daleks Master Plan was going to be airing on Christmas Day. They felt, understandably, that many people would not want to watch a grim, dark, scary continuation of a Dalek story on Christmas. So what exactly was Episode 7, The Feast of Stephen, and how exactly did it fit in with the Daleks' master plan? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. At the end of Episode 6, the Doctor's companion, Stephen, believes that he's figured out a way to make them invulnerable to Dalek blasts using a force field. The Doctor argues with Stephen that it's too dangerous dangerous to experiment with. Meanwhile, Sarah, the Doctor's other companion, lets them know that the TARDIS has landed. However, the scanner on the TARDIS is broken. They can't see outside to see where or when they have landed. After a quick investigation, they find out that they've landed in 1960s England at a police station in front of a group of very suspicious police officers. The Doctor knows this because he opens the TARDIS door, sees the group of policemen staring at him, and immediately retreats inside of the TARDIS, closing the door behind him. The Doctor explains to Sarah and Stephen inside of the TARDIS that they have landed on Earth, thankfully, but that they need to keep the policemen distracted while they fix the scanner. The Doctor leaves the TARDIS, subsequently gets arrested and taken in for questioning. Meanwhile, Stephen sneaks out of the TARDIS, steals a police officer's uniform, and walks walks inside the police station undetected. The doctor, being the doctor, is very candid about his identity. Where are you from? The universe. Why were you inside a police box? It's where I live. But when the doctor starts mentioning that he likes to experiment with time, the police officers assume that he's just mentally unsound and get ready to bring him somewhere else. Policeman Steven stops them and claims that he will take it from here. So he and the doctor exit the police station. But as Steven and the doctor leave the police station, they witness Sarah getting arrested after repairing the scanner herself. She gets free, they run inside of the TARDIS and take off now that they have a working scanner. The TARDIS Curtis attempts to land somewhere safer, yet to their horror, they see a man tying a woman to a sawmill right next to where they landed. Stephen busts out of the TARDIS, punches the man in the face, and realizes that the TARDIS has landed on a film set. Wah wah. After figuring out what has happened, the director of the film starts chasing our heroes through various movie sets. Steven thinks that the director is furious because they ruined his shot, yet the director just wants to catch up to Steven to offer him a job replacing the male lead because he showed off his machismo. And after more movie set antics, the trio finally makes their way back to the TARDIS. But not before the doctor tells an aspiring actor that he's never going to make it in showbiz because of his stupid name. Bing Crosby. They leave, the TARDIS dematerializes, and the crew is left wondering how they were able to pull off such a trick. The Doctor and his companions then make a toast to Christmas, and the Doctor breaks the fourth wall, wishing a very Merry Christmas to everyone at home. Unfortunately, this episode does not exist in its entirety, although the audio of the final scene does exist. I'll link somewhat of a recreation down below with the original audio and some photos from the episode. And also, in the comments down below, let me know your favorite Doctor Who Christmas special. What is a Christmas special that you watch almost every single year without fail? I'm really hoping that Twice Upon a Time is going to be a new favorite of mine. But as always, my name is Travis. Thank you for listening to what I have to say. Have a wonderful holiday weekend, and you'll see me on Monday.